Hello YouTube, Manny Beal here, and welcome to what is uh, hopefully the last part of my deconstruction of Stefan Molyneux's video, Stop Giving Yourself Excuses, which is sort of a another spin-off of our debate two or three weeks ago on his show, where we discussed metaphysics. And you can go back in my recent video history here to get the various deconstructions of a, I've done of that particular show and the, the follow-up videos dealing with these kind of topics. And uh, after this one, I'm going to go into a deconstruction of the essay he has produced um, and presented in these videos also uh, with a deep dive into that and hopefully get some good stuff out of that also. But we went around the one um, hour and seven minutes mark last time, and there's sort of a 15 minutes left. So I should be able to do that within a couple of hours. So let's see if I can manage. Um, yes, let's head on. It's a rule, and then there's an exception. So the fact that you are trained to both accept a rule and accept an exception is, you just train, I mean, you just program that way by power so that you'll accept the moral rules for yourself and give them the exception to those moral rules. You just you're programmed that way. So your desire for there to be an out is your desire to defend power, unjust authoritarian power. You just program that way. Don't fall for it. Don't do it. Because the modern world only exists because of the 100% acceptance of the senses and the behavior of matter and energy. And our brain is directly wired to get 100% certainty. And the uncertainty serves the rulers. I'm just come to think of this 100% certainty of the senses and so on. Um, it's, it's sort of an appeal to the only way you can have any kind of insight to anything is through your senses, ultimately. Now, I know that he would also possibly say that if you feel hungry, well, you are the one having, your mind is controlling your body, and these are, uh, you know, uh, sensations within your body, which you are own, you're the lone owner of. You, you, nobody else can experience your, uh, for instance, pain or, or, or hunger or something like that, right? So there are other avenues to, let's say, insights about the goings-on. Um, but when it comes to the important things in the world or the important things in your life, you could say, the big stuff is through your senses, right? Though, you know, could say philosophy is not going through your senses. That's a, pure, a kind of pure thinking, a meta-thinking that helps you figure out how to understand this experience and how to do with it, or what to do with it, right? Um, but, you know, what I'm thinking along the lines are that, okay, so when he talks about murder, right, that can be something that goes on in him as if he has a sort of stomach ache or something like that, right? So when he's referring to murder... He must be talking about that objective world he's dealing with here, right? So if, if it's sort of certain and set in stone and they're perfect and so on, he must apparently be able to experience murder. But, you know, how would you do that? How would you experience murder? There might be something going on. A, a, a situation that you then label as murder, right? But that labeling comes from the inside. That's an interpretation your mind does or your thinking does, right? The murder doesn't go through your senses, right? Something goes through your senses, creating a situation which you then label as murder, right? But when he talks about murder, he talks of it as something that is objective, right? So it must come from the outside. So the, my, point, my, my question would be, okay, so if it comes through the senses, there are five senses, right? Co and the, the quality of those are colors and sounds and tastes and feels and smells, right? So 
What color Do, does murder have a color? Does murder have a sound? Right? I know that if, if, if let's say somebody pushes some other person that falls from the Eiffel Tower, from the first level of the Eiffel Tower, and you see the fall and then you hear a splat on the pavement. Yes, there are sounds involved in it, but there are similar sounds where it's not murder. So there's nothing unique about that sound that makes it murder as such, right? The sound is a part of that scenario. So the point is, he's basically then implicitly violating Hughes' odd gap, which is you can't describe the world and then deduce from the experiences that that is immoral, right? So how does he do that? But he doesn't. He just, you know, talks about he doesn't have to prove that murder is wrong, right? You, you can say, no, he doesn't have to prove that, that murder is wrong, but that's a, total, a tautology, right? Because murder is a wrong kind of killing. But how did that murder arrive in his awareness, right? Then that's, that's a point that I, I think that he is extremely bad at arguing for, right? And and this fetish of um, certainty has to sort of trickle down upon immorality somehow, because if it's certainty, then that's a kind of uh, elaborate kind of knowledge, or, 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 you know, glorified kind of knowledge. And that glorified knowledge must be somehow responsible for how you get to moral judgments, right? So I'm just saying, well, where does it point this, right? So that, in my opinion, there's not enough subjective stuff in his philosophy in order to get to some kind of decent morality or ethics. Don't give yourself an out, I'm telling you. If you give yourself an out, you'll just be exploited. If you give yourself an out, you'll just have trashy, manipulative people around you for the rest of your natural-born days. You don't give yourself an out. <laughs> so if people try to say, okay, this materialism, there are some problems built into materialism or some questions that should be answerable when you are working from a materialist metaphysics. So if somebody else comes along and say, well, there might be some something already a problem in the metaphysics that would point to when you start to you know, think about that, you might get to another conclusion about how this whole thing works, right? That would elect, actually eliminate those problems or point out that you can't get to an answer to these problems, which is the metaphysics I have presented, right? And therefore, these people are bad, right? It's, it's, uh, it has become such a mantra for him that there cannot possibly be any philosophy where these people are, are you know, arguing, they have to have some kind of agenda. And it's, in his mind, they're out to destroy your sense of reality or, or cohesiveness or coherency or, you know, uh, stability and certainty and all these things so that they can sort of get a nose under the tent and say to you, well, everything is relative. And if I want to kill somebody over there, you can't stop me because it's relative. And, you know, just because I like it, you don't like it, you know, whatever, right? But it doesn't occur to him that there is this built-in problem in his uh, argumentation. There's a contradiction or a paradox, as I called it, right? So he will never get there. And it's he's further inhibited by his own fear that, all those trying to argue this way are out to destroy him. So, of course, he's not going to get anywhere, right? It's impossible. And just like he did with me in those uh, one hour, the one hour that where I actually participated in the discussion, it reeks of him trying every which way he can to get rid of people, right? Trying to label them as crazy somehow. And then they can say, ah, look, they're crazy. They're out to destroy you. Be, be careful. They're crazy, right? Um, and I know that it's a difficult thing to discuss metaphysics uh, for various reasons. I have pointed out in, in various uh, videos and also in this, in these, this deconstruction series on this video, right? 
So it's not an easy thing to both argue, but also it's difficult for people who are this kind of militant defensive of their philosophy, right? And he's, he's apparently should be a proponent of being open and listen to arguments and so on, right? And I, I, I noticed that yesterday I was listening to another more recent video of his where he discusses, you know, uh, the philosophy of God and the epistemology of Jesus. And apparently, as I pointed out just on the board just uh, a few moments ago, that apparently Jesus, according to Stephen Monion, needs to do epistemology uh, because he apparently, you know, doesn't trust that his daddy knows everything, right? So, uh, so Jesus apparently have to do epistemology to figure out what it means to know, even though he has this all-knowing father, right? So that's kind of weird, you know. I guess it's just you know, uh, titles that sounds great uh, to his audience, who apparently is a growing a growing number of Christians, I presume, right? But um, but then he says at some point this Christian dude who was also into some kind of uh, objective morality, whatever, and you know licking his UPB ass, uh, you know, brown nosing Max, right? And when, when this guy had talked for 10 minutes and he says, hey, no, but I, I'm not sure, it's difficult for me to explain. And Stephen Molly says, no, 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 no. Yes, it's difficult, but please uh, take your time and, you know, be, be uh, continue your, you know, your presentation. So that was not the approach I had, he had with me, right? It was like he started to yell or say, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. Well, he could just shut up and let me talk, right? But no, no, he didn't want to do that. Because I didn't agree with him, right? The only way you can get, you know, airtime on his show is if you agree with him, right? So all this being open about philosophy, oh, it's a debate and it's a discussion, the biggest debate on the in the universe uh, known to us, right? About philosophy is free domain. Bull fucking shit, right? It's all about him pushing his own ideas as being the only way of thinking, apparently, right? You raise your standards. Reality is 100%. The senses are 100%. Logic is 100%. No. What is that 100% he's talking about? Percentage is a relative a relative description. It's relative, you fucking moron, man, right? It's relative to something else, right? Uh, how you calculate percentage is... How many are there compared to all of it, right? It's a relative. It's not an absolute, right? So why are you using relative terms? Are you saying, okay, but it's, it's, it's everything, so it must be 100%. But why are you not saying then everything, right? Because a percentage is a, a relative calculation on quantifiable stuff, right? So senses are quantifiable somehow, right? If you're having certain colors, are those 100%? I don't know. I don't understand the, the terminology. It's, it, it sounds like when he's 100%, right? It's sort of, it's calculated and it's, uh, you know, uh, quantified. And so it sounds like it's, uh, you know, scientific or something like that. It's just, you know, bullshit, right? He has no understanding of mathematics or physics or chemistry or anything like that. So. No, out. No exceptions. No out. So he's, he's yelling at people. He is yelling at his congregation in order to give them fear of actually trying to discuss these things, right? He's basically saying to him, if you start to discuss this, I'll kick you, you know, uh, you know, kick you, uh, you know, five yards down the road, right? Out of my system, right? Because you are possibly out to destroy my perfect world, right? So he's yelling at people in order to give them fear. Uh, this is sort of a cultish behavior, right? When, when the master of the philosophy tells everybody, you little peon, beware, right? So, so this is, a, it's awful. It's awful, man, right? Ha! Oh. Ha! Oh. Asterisks, no footnotes, no. It's also like, he, as I mentioned in a comment on a previous video on Odyssey, he's Mr. Peaceful, peaceful Parenting, right? 
which he claims that he has never raised his voice to his wife. He has never raised his voice to his daughter, right? But here he's fucking yelling at the skies and everybody listening, right? So how about peaceful debating, right? No, apparently not. No, that's not what we're interested in here, right? When it comes to that, then it's okay to, to yell, right? So well, what if there are children or young people listening in, right? So you're yelling at them, so you're sort of being a yelly parent to them, right? Is that peaceful parenting? Not in my book, right? Oh, well, but. No fussy logic, no Schroden just can't, no quarks, no bullshit. 100%. 100%. 100%, I tell you. You better. I'll get you. Well, you don't give yourself an out with reality. You don't give yourself an out with morality. And then when people are trying to say, hey, man, well, you can't know anything for true or everything's... I mean, again, if he says this thing is outside, if it's objective, it must be something and I can access also, right? Otherwise, he's living in his own solipsist mind, right? So it must be something outside his mind. And since materialists have never pointed out how you experience other people's minds, right? Then his mind talking to me about what is going on out there must be some kind of experience inside his mind. Otherwise, what the hell is he talking about? Then it's just my experience in being weird where I'm interpreting them as a Stephen Molyneux talking about experiences outside my experiences, right? So, in the end, there's an external world to your experiences. And then the fucking question is, how do you have access to that? If you say that you know, they are representations on the inside of that experience, within my, exp within my mind are those experiences that are sort of placeholders for whatever it is out there. Okay, fine. But the problem is then, if it's an experience on the inside your mind, that which you're referring to are those experiences. And since they are experiences, they're not the real thing, right? Then you don't have access to that real thing or the actual thing that those, that reality or that experience is based on, right? And because he can't realize this, he has to sit there and yell at people and tell them they're fucking crazy, right? He is the crazy one, right? Thinking that what he has on the inner side of his skull is exactly the same as that which is out there. Which must be his conclusion, right? How the hell can it be, right? <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Objective or nothing is real or nothing is virtuous or everything is relative and all that. You'd be like, oh, okay, so you're just giving yourself an out. And what that means is you have full permission to act like a shitty human being to me. Oh, you're a shitty human being. So now I have relativity because now I can say it's not 100%, it's only 90%. So now I'm going to be a shitty person, yes. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't buy this. I mean, it's, it's, sort of, um, it's sort of this black and white thinking that you can't support any argument in a different direction than your own, right? Apparently out of fear that he's going to lose his mind or something. Well, that seems to be, for me, to be a, a, a proof of a weak uh, mentality, a, a weak backbone, right? He, he can't step out of his comfort zone and, you know, start to debate a bit, try, try on for size uh, some other kind of thinking that might you know, enlighten him. It might not enlighten him. Fair. Fair enough. But it's like, no, 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 I'm not even going to attempt to listen to it. I'm just going to reject it and just tell people you're fucking crazy and don't come near me. Don't come near my congregation and try to undermine that perfect 100% reality. I'm... <laughs> so if this is, the E thinks this is the, the one-way street to, you know, heaven on earth, uh, have perfect uh, morals or something like that. Well, good luck with that, uh, Mr. Molyneux, right? Because it's never going to fly. You have to accept people need to be able to make their own judgments, their own understanding, their own experience. You can't tell them there's an elephant, right? 
Who gives a crap what you think, right? I'm interested in what I experience. And if you say there's an elephant and I don't experience an ele elephant, I'm going to say, fuck you, right? I'm not experiencing an elephant over there, but you say there's an elephant. I don't care how much you think it's 100% or it's your whatever, right? I'm trusting my own experiences. I'm telling you the practical, I mean, it's not just abstract metaphysics and epistemology. This is absolute consequentialist facts in your social, business and political environment, everything, everywhere. People give themselves an out in reality. You don't think they're going to give themselves an out in morality? <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, the entire purpose of giving people, the, the reason why people give themselves an out an escape hatch, a vent, an asterisk. The reason people give themselves an out in reality is so they can behave like shitty people and not blame themselves. The entire purpose of... Really? Really? So it's sort of... Those who have a different kind of thinking than you on, in this regard, they're all sort of attempting to validate their evil or whatever. Okay, but... When you're doing metaphysics, right? You 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 shouldn't be using. I, I can see that you, where, where your thinking is leading you, but you are sort of jumping ahead very far fast, right? In order to be able to demonize people, but you you shouldn't be doing that when you're doing metaphysics because you are jumping over epistemology, right? And objectivity, for that matter, right? And ethics, for that matter, right? So if you if you are if you have written a, written a book on ethics, you shouldn't be discussing metaphysics anymore, right? Basically, I mean to some extent at least, right? Because it must be settled because you did your ethics, right? So just just go read my quote on metaphysics, right? Let me explain to you what I'm thinking, right? So I I, I don't know, but but it's it's um it's this uh, he jumps to whatever part of philosophy that has to be structured strictly, in my opinion, to grab onto something that he sort of can throw at people in order to create certain conclusion and emotions that sort of push them in a certain direction without them thinking for themselves, but they feel sort of threatened or they feel... Um, or they feel that they are part of a bigger system because, oh yes, I agree with him, and then we are, we are together, right? We are, let's fight the bastards, right? Something like that. Oh, I don't fully trust the senses, and you can't ever know anything for real is, oh, I'm going to be a shitty person because I don't have 100% standards. If I don't have 100% standards in reality, you expect me to have 100% standards in morality? That would be insane. Morality is less vivid, less impactful than reality. You know, I can listen, I can knock... On a piece of wood, I can't knock on UPP. I can't knock on the scientific method. I can't knock on logic. So if somebody's saying, I don't believe that's anything real for sure. Oh, but I'm willing to be perfectly moral. No, come on. It's a warning sign. It's a shot across the bow. It's like that really... No, but... Yes, what he indirectly illuminates here is that it is very 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 important that you get your metaphysics right at least if i wanted to turn this around and give it a positive spin right he points out by being such a bad philosopher right he still points out how important it is that you have this foundational stuff settled because everything will follow from that right and he illuminates you that his thinking leads him to 100% this and perfect that and, and whatever, right? It's not because he's deriving it from his thinking. It's because he needs it in order to be able to argue. So he is using, he's creating an agenda and a mantra and, and conclusion based on this fallacious bad metaphysics, right? So if that is, if that is in a certain way, then is the first step to the next argument, which is the first step to the next argument, and so on, right? But if this first one is not correct, then the rest isn't shouldn't be considered. It might be uh, out of coincidence or something like that, 
but it might you know they, it might be a, a whole different path you need to take right and it it can only be inspired by that ground floor his we are working from or you're working from in your metaphysics that's why metaphysics is such a freaking important thing right and it's mostly because if you get it wrong <laughs> the rest of it should be considered wrong right and you won't even identify it because it seems to hang together all the arguments from one to the next and the next but it just because it followed from that starting argument that okay then it must be this and then it must be this and you can't see any holes in it but the everything is incorrect because the first one is incorrect right so i i don't think i can say it more precisely than that bright colored flog in, frog in hawaii you just feel like picking up but don't <laughs> It's a warning, it's a communication to say, I have full permission to be shitty. Because there's no such thing as shitty because everything's subjective. I have full permission to be. So just because uh, that you, you, if you're not considering your experience as the exact same thing that is outside your mind, Everything is subject, uh, uh, relative then, right? Everything is relative. Nah, that doesn't necessarily follow, right? I mean, yes, from the starting point, everything is subjective, but that doesn't mean it's relative, is it? Does it? Because subjective is a, a, a unique approach to whatever you're experiencing, but relative is a comparison to something else, right? So, it's just this, um, be careful not to go too quickly with his terms, right? Be sure that you have thought about what he's actually saying and whether or not it makes sense in the bigger whole of this, right? So Corrupt, manipulative, evil, exploitive. Because there's no such thing. I mean, hey, man, I don't even believe that you exist and you expect me to be perfectly moral. I don't even believe that reality exists and yet you want me to be consistently moral. I don't even believe that my sense data or the behavior of matter and energy is consistent and you want me to be morally consistent i just told you i don't believe in consistency in a rock and you want me to be morally consistent in my soul no subjectivism leads to relativism leads to exploitation the people who are telling you they don't believe in reality are telling you they don't believe in but it doesn't follow from the argument that just because you don't think you have access directly to an external world, let's say, right? You only have the experiential version on the inside. That doesn't mean you get to do what the fuck you want. Why does that follow, right? It seems like it's sort of a hyperbole of some kind, right? It's sort of, uh, then if you open the back, uh, you know, just a small pinprick in the balloon is going to explode everything, right? It's sort of an analogy that is not substantiated in arguments. It's just fear-based, sort of fear-mongering kind of lingo he's using, right? It's sort of, at least this, at least this, done, and everything is oh, exploding. The oh, world is going down into the drain or whatever. Mm. I would like some more coherent argumentation for this, right? Um, even if I believed in it, I would ask for better argumentation, right? But I don't, I, I see the problem in his metaphysics, so he doesn't need to argue. It doesn't matter what he argues because he's, it's incorrect metaphysics uh, in, to the best of my understanding of this philosophy, right? So it's like um, he he's sitting there shouting for, for a good hour uh, to in order to in some way, possibly, he's hoping that the world is going to listen to him, right? And be fearful of his fear venting um, that that is going to somehow change thinking by him raising his voice, sort of, right? I I, I don't think that's going to work. I I don't think that's going to work, right? Um, that's why you 
I mean, you're calling yourself a philosopher, right? So use philosophy. Use the thinking. Don't just say, it's 100%, right? You're crazy. It's all relative. <laughs> That's not philosophical in nature. That's just yelling, right? So how did you get to these kind of insights do you think you have? You know, let us follow the argument, right? Follow the argument. Make a sort of coherent statement where you're working from. What is your blank slate? What is it? And what's the next step after that blank slate? And so on. Why don't you do that if you're such a great philosopher? Instead of sitting there yelling at people, right? That's fucking stupid. Confront you. People who are telling you you can't trust your senses are telling you you can't trust me. Because I've just told you I don't even trust my senses. I don't believe that anything is real or anything is true. And they're like, well, I'm sure he'll be moral, though. Now, if, if you're good at doing this kind of uh, philosophy and metaphysics that I'm trying to present, I would say that the only thing you can trust is your senses, right? And what, deri what is derived from those senses? That's your fucking anchor point. That's the only... That's the connection between you and that external world you do not have access to, right? You're talking about that external world as if you have access to it, right? And you can tell people you should experience this or you should experience that. And it's 100% I've been out there, right? Sort of, that's fucking crazy. Where you sort of superseding people's uh, subjective experiences of that which you claim to have access to, right? So, no, no, it's subjective. I have been there out in objectivity. And I'm telling you, it's 100%, right? That's fucking crazy, right? We have to be on a similar level, right? So if if we have then access to that objective reality out there, there wouldn't be any disagreement, right? And maybe that's why you're saying, but that must be then because they are out to try to fool you, right? Because they must have access to that objective world. So we, we should all basically agree, apparently, according to him, right? And if we disagree with him. It must be because they're out to get him, right? Something like that, right? So, thinking that you can tap into this kind of objectivity just out of the blue without any kind of uh, propositions or any kind of agreement between people, that's fucking dangerous, right? That's fucking dangerous. The notion of certainty is a huge problem for human beings, in my opinion. When push comes to shove, I'm sure that, right? How can he believe that he could be immoral when he doesn't even believe a tree exists? <laughs> you understand? He's twisting it around, right? No, because he doesn't understand what these people, and me included, being decent at this kind of argumentation, we are not saying that it, there's no tree. Because tree is what you experience. But since tree is an experience and there's an outside which you're saying that tree is out there. Okay, but you're, then you're saying your experience is out there. But it can't be. It must be in there. And if it's in there, it can't be the thing itself if you claim it's out there, out there also. Right? So it must can merely be a representation of it. A, an experiential a representation of it. At most, right, in my opinion, right? It could be that is there isn't something out there. You're just having experiences. You can't argue your way out of it without start to yelling at the skies, as he does, right? But you can state axiomatically saying, I'm working from this axiom that my experiences are placeholders for whatever is out there that I do not have access to, right? That you can do. <coughs> and in my opinion, potentially agree with people on these axioms, if you need more than that axiom, right? Which I would think that you would need um, a whole series of axioms that you're working from, because you can't possibly reason your way through it, right? So maybe all of the metaphysics and epistemology has to be based on axioms. I'm sort of uh, getting almost to that point of this at this point, right? So. It's like a debate I had with a professor years ago. Is it Thaddeus Russell? If memory serves, 
<clears throat> he believed that it was theoretically possible for a woman to mate with a tree and have a baby. If memory serves, mm, so is it knowledge? So if, if memory doesn't serve you, then there isn't knowledge or only half knowledge or what, right? So memories are not good uh, to be classified as knowledge, right? You would agree with that. Anybody tells you they don't believe that reality exists is telling you as clear as daylight. If I don't have any standards for reality, you expect me to have any standards for myself? Are you crazy? You're the crazy one here, not him. He's, he's being perfectly honest, perfectly clear. Nothing is true, man. Nothing is real. You can't know anything for certain. You can't know anything 100%. The senses could lie to you. Reality changes. It shifts. It's like... So you have no standards for your own behavior. How do you have standards for your own behavior when you don't even have standards for oxygen existing? <laughs> it's a... I mean, it's the biggest red flag there is. It's the biggest red flag. I mean, UPB, you understand. Or, you know, if somebody's a Christian and they believe in universal morality and follow it and so on, that's same effect, different cause. UPB is a filter to get dangerous exploiters out of your life. Or hopefully to bring them to the light and that they accept the senses, they accept reality, they accept logic, they accept empiricism. They don't give themselves an out in the existence of air or gravity and therefore they're less likely to give themselves an out when it comes to logic or morality. But expecting somebody to have higher standards in the abstract than they have in their own tangible <laughs> sense data is mad. What makes sense data tangible, right? They're still sense data, right? It's just, it's a sound and a feel, right? You're knocking on the, yeah, but I've, I have a feel, right? And I have some sounds and I have some, maybe the colors. But what is it that is tangible about them? You're just adding words to it without clarifying why you need to add that word. There must be something that word is ex explaining other than that which you just explained, which was sounds and colors and so on, right? So it's like you're jumping into interpretations and classifications with as if they're given to you, right? I don't like that kind of argumentation. You have to get from one point to the other, not by just labeling them, uh, which is sort of would always be some kind of confirmation bias, in my opinion. So you, it's tangible, and therefore it's real, and therefore it's hundred percent. It's sort of it, it's a slippery slope of argument, right? That leads to the point you want to go to, but you haven't made sufficient arguments for it, right? Why it must must lead to this or that, and if you can't do it then you need to do it as some kind of axiom, in my opinion, right? And then we can agree or disagree on that axiom, and then we can part ways if necessary, right? Truly mad. You think the madness is them, and the madness is in you if you believe this stuff. I say with love and affection. I'm going to make this case as passionately as I can, because I want you all to stay safe in these increasingly dangerous times. Expecting someone to have higher moral standards than a standard of sense, data, empirical reality is crazy. They'll have lower standards in morality than they have in reality. Well, they might have to argue for that morality before they just, right? If, I mean, if somebody is this kind of relative, he is sort of, you know, why are you listening to them? If all they're saying, well, I can do whatever I want, you would say, okay, fuck off, man, right? That's an easy one. If they can't argue philosophically, rigidly, for any kind of moral principles, right? You're not taking that seriously when they, they say, well, I can do what I want. Why are you taking that seriously, right? Why? It's stupid. It's, it's, it's obnoxious, right? Just if they're that crazy, you know, leave them alone, right? You, you could be interested in hearing, okay, now you have this kind of relative morality. Interesting. Let me hear your argument for how you arrive at that, right? It might be right. It, you might turn out that you're wrong and they're right or that person is right. But just, you know, fear-mongering out of the gate, that's not 
decent philosophy in my opinion, right? At least you could say, okay, if you have this weird morality, okay, we can't argue for any kind of mora- uh, ethics without having epistemology. And we can't do epistemology without having metaphysics. And then we have to have the foundations of metaphysics. And that's actually what I tried to do in that debate, right? Go winding all the way back to that starting point and try to figure out if we disagree, what is it actually we're disagreeing about? And why might we lead to one or the other or a third uh, starting ground, right? No, he doesn't want to do that, apparently, because he doesn't, he doesn't think that he thinks there's only one solution and that is his, right? Even though he's heard about idealism and apparently several other uh, approaches to metaphysics, right? Including his Jesus, right? Um, that this kind of structured fashion of arguing, and if people don't want to go to that metaphysics ground floor, well, you kind of got them, right? If they're saying, oh, no, 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 we don't need to go there. No, 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 right? Then you're going to say, well, then I can't take your moral serious. I don't care about your relative uh, morality. If you can't go back to the basics and start from there and follow me through your arguments, right? So that's what he should appreciate about the call I made, the debate I tried, he should shut the fuck up and listen and say, okay, are you sure you mean that? Okay, I see you, whatever, right? No, he kept shouting and interrupting, doing everything under the sun because his metaphysics is shit, right? He's just better at shouting and manipulating and being a sophist about it that people might actually think he's right, even though he is as stupid as these relativists, right? Somebody can reject the existence of something they're holding in their hand, right? They're holding an egg in their hand and they say there is no egg. No, they're saying the experience I have of that egg or what I'm calling egg is actually just an experience. Because if I experience egg, that experience must be in my mind. But if at the same time I'm saying my hand is outside my mind, then both my hand and then egg can't be the the actual thing out there because I'm having an experience of it, right? So I repeated this and pounded it ho- this horse to flatness, right? Uh, but that's that's the point you you have to get to, right? In my opinion, you have to get to this and find some solution to that problem. If somebody rejects the existence of something they're holding in their hand, do you think that they will ever accept that they've been wrong about anything? That they need to reform, that they need to do better, that they need to raise their standards for more. Who, who's telling who to raise standards and so on? Are you are you thinking you're such a patron that uh, you know you can run around patronizing people and tell them how they should improve? Who the hell do you think you are, man? Right? Who do you think you are? You're so waltzing around telling people how they should do this or do that, right? Based on what? Based on what? Because you think that everything is 100% perfect and, you know, I have to adjust them. If not, they are not obeying. In the end, I have to shoot them. Right? Something like that. It doesn't... The, the final solution to this problem seems like a lot of dead people, in my opinion. I might be wrong about it, but I don't want to find out, right? Because he's not leaving any room for anybody to have any other idea about what is going on that he has, right? Morality? God, no. If you can reject the egg, you can reject everything. If you can reject the egg, you can reject everything, including being trustworthy, moral, reliable, honest. Well, I don't believe that reality exists, but... Honesty. So when you were on, on Joe Rogan and told Joe Rogan that there hadn't been any problem with uh, your your wife's behavior, uh, you know, with the uh, psychiatry organization of Canada, whatever the fuck it was called, right? You said, no, there was nothing, no, no problem. No. And then it actually, there was a huge problem. Uh, she meddling with whatever, she was violating her the code of the, the, whatever, when you are educated, you have a certain standard you have to live up to when you're a psychiatrist or whatever she is, right? Psychologist. 
No, no, no. That's is that honesty, right? Sort of blank face, lying straight to or lying straight to Joe Rogan and all his listeners' face, right? Because you didn't want it to get out on this big forum, right? Oh, honesty. You don't fucking lecture people about being honest, right? I do believe I have to be a hundred percent honest. <laughs> well, where would you get the hundred percent for honesty if you don't? Why do I need to have to be honest? Right? Do I have to go around telling people everything I know all the time? Or do I have to wait till they ask me a question and then I'm obliged or I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I have to answer and I have to tell you exactly what I'm thinking. Get the fuck out of here, right? No, I don't have to tell anybody anything, right? And I don't have to be honest, right? The Nazis by the door asking for your wife or whatever, right? Do you have to be honest? Oh, no, 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 no. Then you're being forced. Uh, whatever bullshit you can come up with, right? Even have 100% for reality. This is why metaphysically and epistemologically, you don't give yourself an out. Because the out that you give, you won't believe anyway. You won't act that way. You know, if somebody's standing on the street and they're a subjectivist and a relativist and metaphysically mental and a bus comes towards them and honks at them, they'll jump out of the way. They don't believe that stuff. The entire purpose of this metaphysical insanity is not to change anyone's mind about reality, but to give them permission to be as shitty as they want. The purpose is... He'll, he'll be, in the future, if anybody remembers him, what he'll be remembered for is so stupid that he couldn't get to the foundational question of metaphysics. He was simply mentally unable to get to it, right? And then all he could do was standing on his soapbox, yelling at people, right? And creating this dichotomy of, there are these people who are relatives, they are dangerous, you know, something like that, right? That's what the takeaway is with Stefan Molyneux, right? He's never going to be remembered for anything he wants to be remembered for. <laughs> Let me tell you that, right? Straight up. Get out of jail free card for shitty behavior. That's the whole purpose of all this metaphysical madness. Nobody lives that way. Nobody could live that way. It's impossible. You wouldn't survive. Why would you breathe? You don't know that oxygen is real. No, no, no. The whole purpose is just to be a terrible human being. And this is why people get dug into this position. Because once they've done enough bad stuff, you can't turn back. Right? Once you've smoked enough cigarettes, you can't run a marathon. Right? Once you've eaten enough Twinkies. You can't climb a mountain. Now, maybe you could wait, reform, and this and that and there, but there is a certain tipping point where there is no turning back. Once you've smoked enough cigarettes and you get lung cancer, there ain't no, you know, quitting smoking is not going to erase your lung cancer or prevent you from getting it, right? So there's a certain tipping point. Now, once you reach those, so you, you, you've disbelieved in reality to the point where you've allowed yourself to do terrible things, but said, hey, man, everything's relative, nothing is true, nothing is real, therefore nothing can be moral, therefore I can't be immoral, therefore I can do what I want. It's a satanic belief. Do what you want. Everything you do is right. Everything you do is moral. No external standards, no requirements, no facts, no truth. External standards. I would like to know what that is. Is that Stephen Mullen you're telling you what you should do or shouldn't do? But how this, did he get to it by his subjective standards, right? He's running around with his mind, I presume, all the time and having experiences. He's just labeling that as some kind of objective standard from the outside, impinging on him or something. That's fucking crazy, right? Just leave these bastards alone if you don't want to be near them, right? Get, get them out of the way. Yeah, I know you are possibly forced to, uh, you know, have some kind of uh, association with people you don't want to have association based on, you know, the state, on religion, whatever, right? Or your wife or whatever, right? Yeah, I understand that, but that, that doesn't mean you should take them seriously, right? What are you basically afraid of? If you are able to avoid these people, what are you afraid of, right? Are you afraid that your religion might be, you know, destroyed? Or that st the state might, you know, they might undermine the state to get back at you, something like that, right? So what is the takeaway then? Isn't it that there shouldn't be a state, there shouldn't be a religion, there shouldn't be anything 
forced upon you that you haven't agreed to, right? If you agree to it, fine, then it's your problem. And if you don't want to agree to it, you should be able to say no thank you, right? So get away from me with that uh, relativism, right? So, problem solved. There is no evidence, no objectivity, nothing that your mind cannot torture into a justification because there is no reality. You mean the escape hatch from reality leads only to hell. Please understand this. The escape hatch from reality leads only to hell. That's why I'm trying to save you with this speech, which oh, sounds lengthy, shit. sounds involved. Oh, involved. Now it's, now it's both involved and passionate, right? When he's yelling, it's either passionate or it's involved, right? Possibly, you know, you know synonyms for, for the same term, right? Or the same idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not yelling at you. He's not, you know, trying to you know, shut you up or anything like that or make you go away, right? So. It is a desperate plea to save your soul. Don't give yourself an out. So you're appealing to their, uh, to their thinking, right? If, if you can give yourself an out, you're appealing to, you can think for yourself and draw some conclusions, right? So it's like um, people have an ability to, th to think. So if the, you if you believe that they can think for themselves, don't beg them. Don't order them around and saying, don't do this, don't do that, don't think like this, don't think like that. It will be bad, bad, bad all over, right? That's stupid, man. You're You're supposed to be a philosopher, man, right? Carry me through the arguments, right? Start with that blank slate you are so much a fan of. Build it up from there. Tell me why it's not relative, right? If you can't do it, you're not going to, you know, convince those who are actually relativists, right? If there's such a thing even exists. Uh, I don't know, right? I'm not a relativist. I don't think so, uh, judging from his explanations, right? So it's like, um, do the, do the, try to, Present your philosophy rather than shouting at people, right? It's pathetically, you know, childish. It's a stupid kind of thinking, right? It's sort of, you're desperate. You, you, the, the only thing I have left is trying to yell at people and control their mind, right? Who can you think of in the 20th century that had that uh, approach to things, right? Give yourself an out, you give those around you outs, and you just fall, fall and fall, and don't even know that you're falling, because your values are fixed to nothing. If you're pushed out of a plane holding a tennis ball, and you only look at the tennis ball, say, well, me and the tennis ball don't look like, the, the, the tennis ball is not falling for me, I'm not falling from the tennis ball, therefore we're not falling. If you only look at something that is not fixed, you can do anything you want. And the problem is, though, that you pay the consequences because your unconscious operates on universals. I'm telling you this right now. Your unconscious acts on universals. This is why you can catch a ball before you know calculus, differential equations. Before you can mathematically describe the ball, you can catch the ball because you know where it's going to be, and right, people who couldn't pass grade 7 math can play basketball. They know how to throw, they know where the ball's going to go, they understand gravity, they understand momentum, they understand the weight of the ball, they understand inertia, even centrifugal forces. They hold the ball tighter when they spin around. Okay. Unconscious acts on universals. It has to, otherwise we couldn't have survived, because we need universals to survive. So your unconscious acts on universals. Your conscious mind can screw with all of this stuff and throw sand in the Vaseline, so to speak. Gum up the works, put sugar in the gas tank. Your conscious mind can do this. The unconscious acts in universals whether we like it or not, which is why the person, whatever their bullshit, top of the brain, epistemological insanity, they will jump out of I don't like you calling my arguments bullshit, right? All you apparently can do is throw shit at people. You can present a coherent series of arguments that could 
just illuminate wh where you're coming from, right? All you could do is shout at people and calling it philosophy, right? It's ridiculous. No, no normal functioning uh, philosophical person would do things like you do it, right? Without having some kind of a break in their sort of a mental capacity or the 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 human em em empathy system or something like that that you you there's no room for anybody thinking differently right because you can't think that far i and you even said in a, in, in an earlier uh, podcast i think that and i was actually an able an able argument or able debater, right? That should, you should be even more, uh, you know, open for debating, right? It was like you find, oh, this guy is able. Okay, I have to really shut him down and mute him and, you know, get rid of him, right? Because he might be very good at sophistry or something like that, right? So it takes one to know one, right? Or takes one to think that everybody steals, right? It takes a thief to think that everybody steals. It takes a sophist to think that everybody is sophist, sophisting uh, or sophists because he's a sophist, right? So he thinks everybody's out to manipulate him because that's what he does, right? <laughs> oh, man, right? I just don't like to be called an idiot without good reason, right? He has never argued anything in metaphysics. He's just said 100% and then thinking he's doing an argument that is a philosophical in nature. Holy fucking crap, man, right? You're an idiot. The way of a bus that's coming their way. The unconscious acts on universals. So we can pretend that we can do anything we want and nothing is real and nothing is true and nothing is moral, and right? But unconsciously, morality is operating whether we like it or not. UPB is merely a description at the, at the unconscious level of the universalization of morality that happens because we are universalization machines. We couldn't have science or this conversation if we well, could have language if we weren't. We are universalization no, machines. But I'm if you give yourself fucking tired of hearing about this universality. Because there's nothing in thinking using universal that tells me what to do with people, right? You saying yeah, 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 but it's not universal that you are sticking that knife into that person. They don't like it because they are not liking what you're doing, and so, that's that's not the tool I can use for navigating that world you are so hung up on, right? There's there's no principle in your ethics. You're talking about it's not universal, whatever. Who gives a crap, man? I want to know whether or not I should throw a knife or not at that person. And I want, need to be able to do it on my own accord without having to call up to ask you whether or not it's universal, right? An exception at the empirical level, you won't ever believe it, you won't ever follow it. You are merely doing that in the mad hope that morality is subjective. You can do whatever you want, but it ain't. Morality operates at a level below the conscious mind because morality is universal and we are universal making machines. That's what our brains do, is they conceptualize and universalize. And so... So you're deriving morality from an external experience, right? From your senses? So the world is universal, as you say, therefore morality is universal. Why does that follow, right? If it's that easy, why haven't anybody pointed to it, right? And you can't apparently point to it. You can only say, yeah, if you make this rule, it has to be universal. Otherwise, it doesn't function as a rule. Okay, but then I can make out a gazillion rules. I have to run through your system to check out whether they... And could they be contradictory? Who the hell knows, right? So I can pick and choose whatever rule I want, just like you say you shouldn't be able to, right? Oh, man. You may ignore universal morality. You may act against it. But that doesn't mean universal morality will ignore you and not act against you. That's what they call... So morality is acting? What is that? Is there morality floating out, out there, you know... Getting back at me if I don't do things right? <laughs> oh my God. You can't mean that. 
you're not that level crazy, right? I understand that. But why are you using terms like this, right? Why are you describing it that way, as if there's some, you know, uh, dark uh, <laughs> morality lurking around? You know, you know that must be your, you know, your Christianity, and you know, there's a God lurking around each corner, you know, keeping an eye on you and getting back and striking you with, smiting you with thunder if you don't obey, right? <laughs> conscience. Now, in the Christian theology, the conscience is generally soul divine part of you that recognize and accepts the majesty and virtue and commandments of god oh the majesty and the virtues oh the commandments yes i'm awaiting for commandments from the sky ghost yes yeah that's the great yeah uh, this hundred percent senses and so on yeah by the way there's this commanding officer up there in the skies yeah, yeah somewhere well uh, oh. fuck off man what a big pile of junk this philosophy is right holy f oh man it's ugly in philosophy the conscience is the fact that upb operates in our minds and the more we reject it in our conscious mind so now when you so before you wrote the book upb there was still upb roaming around in my mind or what right i'm older than your book right <laughs> let's just put it that way so there was UPP, you just, you know, oh, I have UPP roaming around in my mind. So I guess it's roaming in everybody's mind. So I'm just going to write it down and call it a book. And then I found the Holy Grail. Yes, there's UPP everywhere. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> and the more it ends up operating in the unconscious mind. UPP operates within us, whether we like it or not. UPP is not an invention it is a discovery the archaeologist <gasps> uncovering the city didn't build the city out of nothing he's covering something that's already there upb is a description of it's a description it's a description i thought it was a moral system or ethical system now it's a description it's a description that is a system what the hell? It's like every time he talks about his UPP, he sort of twists the words around yet another time. And now it's a description rather than a system. And now it's sort of universal over there. And there's also God over here and Jesus there. And who knows what, right? Oh, man. <laughs> it gets worse and worse and worse. No wonder that only the most stupid and incompetent people are still listening to him and he has to brown nose to the christians because they're the only one left they're so fucking crazy in their mind that have their mind destroyed so they can't think straight right they're the only ones left who's only actually going to listen to this crap right because it's it's so it's so mind fracked that it's it's inconceivable it's unapproachable on a philosophical level right it, it's you know, go listen to my deconstruction of his UPB book. It's an awful, Peter, awful piece of writing. It's not philosophical. It's basically not really about ethics, although he throws these words around, right? And it's like it's it's all over the place and nowhere at the same time, right? And his core arguments are not arguments. They're deductions. They're no conclusions and syllogisms that are used as arguments. You know, I don't know what, right? It's all over the place. It's a piece of junk, right? And he keeps talking about it if, if he has found the Holy Grail by observing things. And it's roaming around in everybody's mind and I don't know what, right? Unconscious and so on. Go, oh, man. The universal ethics that operate in our conceptual hamster on a wheel brain. Like, you could ignore the fact that smoking might kill you. That doesn't mean that smoking is no longer harmful to you. Because smoking operates at the physical level. And you can believe that universal morality doesn't apply to you. But your entire brain is a machinery of universality. And you will use, you know, you will use ethics to manipulate other people. And then you think that somehow you'll be immune from any blowback or any consequences. The conscience operates at a physical level that is below our capacity to deny. 
UPB operates at a physical base of the brain level. It is beyond our capacity to deny because everything we invent to control other people involves universal morality. Don't give yourself an out. Just take a deep breath and relax into the truth, away from the program. Relax into the truth. Oh, yeah, he just handed it to you, right? Relax in the truth. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. Oh, it's cultish, right? Oh, <laughs> oh man. Of those who would manipulate. He's fucking crazy. He's a fucking crazy bastard, man, right? He's he's very eloquent in his way of and he can use words and he can but when you try to scratch beneath the surface, it's just like a bag of words, right? There isn't really any philosophy anywhere, right? <laughs> Nothing that is coherent and approachable. You should sort of go, oh, well, I'm not sort of, oh, this, I keep it a certain distance to this kind of thinking, right? Thinking, quote, he's, he's crazy, man, right? <laughs> you let you by creating exceptions to reality and exceptions to morality that they use to enslave you. <gasps> oh. No outs. Just get on your knees. Okay, or if you try to argue otherwise, you will get an out. You will get out of free domain, right? You'll be kicked, right? Just like I was after three days, I was kicked for asking questions about this cult, right? So that's how it works. That's how he rolls. It's my way or the highway, right? And praise and worship and thank the reality. Thank the reality. <laughs> He sounds like some kind of weird, corrupt priest or something like that, right? I mean, think reality? What kind of bullshit is this, man, right? No decent, philosophically interested person would argue this way or, or make these kind of statements. Think reality? What the hell kind of stupid shit is that? <laughs> oh man, this this guy's mad. He's fucking crazy. He's paranoid, right? That gives you sanity. And the reality that gives you morality. That gives you virtue. Okay, so he's violating Hume's is or he can observe morality apparently, right? It arrives through his senses or something like that. He's fucking crazy, man, right? Oh, he's crazy that gives you happiness and the great glory of virtue, which is love. I love it and <sighs> everything. <laughs> if you do it like me, you will be happy and you will have morality and love and everything. But the other way, it's straight to hell, right? <laughs> I actually start to see why he's leaning up, you know, brown nosing and uh, spooning with Christianity, because it's basically we are the right thinking ones and they are the evil ones over there, right? Oh, man. It's disgusting. Oh, man. Creepy. Cultish. Crazy. Paranoid, man, right? Oh. Glad to get that out of my system. Oh. oh, now I got it out of my system. Oh, yeah, you had to, you know, <laughs> give me money for shouting in your ear, right? Donate. I only have 1,200 Bitcoin. Give me some more money or donations so I can survive. So. Again, I don't think I'm going to do better than that speech. So I think I'll quit while the quit. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you won't do better. No. Well, I like your honesty. But it also tells you a lot about uh, what uh, kind of level of philosophical insight and argumentation you're going to get from this dude, right? You're not going to get anything. You're going to be either, you know, oh man, just tell me I'm great. Or you're evil. Get out of my way, right? That's the level of discourse we enter here, right? Holy fucking shit, man, right? But it gets good. Don't sell past the sale. <laughs> Happy <laughs> sales are wonderful. Weekend, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I guess it's Sunday. The Church of Philosophy is in session. <gasps> oh, the Church Free of Philosophy. Freedomain.com forward slash donate oh. to help out the show. Come on, you guys know this is very hard and deep one knowledge that really right. can change your life. A couple of bucks is not unreasonable, is it? 
a couple of bucks. Left. I only have twelve hundred bitcoins through my through my account, my Bitcoin account. Only twelve hundred bitcoin. That's only about fifty to a hundred million dollars, right? So it's like I'm quite poor, you know. Yes, I bought a new house, and that's why you have this. I have this curtain behind me, and you never see me really, uh, except you know whatever, right? <laughs> I mean. What what are you going to do with this shit? Is this, if you think this is going to help you in any philosophical way, I I'll tell you you wouldn't you'd be wrong, right? This is not going to help you anyway. This is going to destroy your ability to philosophize, right? If anything, you you're sort of getting an, a sense that I have to think a certain way, otherwise. Is the money going to be angry with me? <laughs> no, that's not going to help you do good philosophy because you will be afraid of reaching the wrong conclusions. And then you're going to stick to your confirmation bias, right? He's awful. He's a parody. He's, he's beyond parody. He's just nothing, right? He's dangerous. Do I need to help out the show to help me out? And to help out my motivation a little bit as well. So have yourself a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you everyone so much for dropping by. Lots of love from up here. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, so that's the end of this. Um, so this is part of how many? Part four? Part five? <laughs> I don't actually remember, but it will be mentioned in the line, right? Uh, or the title. Um, I did, I, it's like... I'm I'm kind of fed up with him, right? And it wasn't because I am at the center of this kind of these videos he's doing here, right? I wouldn't bother with it, but I have to redeem myself and justify myself, right? I'm not going to let him pass in anything, right? So the last thing I think I'm going to be doing is um, I might consider sending him another email because the first email I sent about this he misunderstood, right? So I might you know, make a round of email when I have done the deconstruction of his essay, which is sort of metaphysical, half an hour long essay. And God knows how long it will take me to get through that. But I'll try to make it short, right? And I'm I'm getting tired of this bullshit with him, right? Um, so, and if I do that email, I will possibly, there might be a follow-up on that if he mentions his, or some, whatever happens, right? Let's see. But the next step will be a deconstruction of his essay. And, you know, so far, so good. See you there.